I'm not feeling comfortable with him sitting on the sideline crying like that. Uh, that makes me uncomfortable. So that tells me uh, he's not in, sh in shape to play. I mean, I don't know how this night is going to turn out. But to be sitting on the sideline a few minutes before the game crying, uh, that makes me uncomfortable for him. Uh, that's, just, that's just not a good look, in my personal opinion. I have the utmost respect for Charles Barkley as an independent thinker, as someone without a filter, and who does this, I think, very clearly, not in an attempt to get attention, anything he ever says, but in a searching attempt to find truth. I think that's what he was doing here. I think he was trying to find insight and truthfulness and telling us what he might have thought as a teammate. I just can't find where he's right in this in any way. Is he making his teammates uncomfortable? Is that what Barkley's saying? Is he uncomfortable with Thomas playing? I don't know. What I do know is this. There are many people who show up to work while going through personal hardships. Mm -hmm. Some, when it's tragic. I know that I've had that situation in my life, Max, and I know very well that you have had it yourself. I just saw Isaiah Thomas do one of the most tough things that I can imagine, and that show up onto a basketball court and not just perform, but perform at the highest level. 33 points, shooting over 50%. You can have John Wall's performance this weekend as far as I'm concerned. You can have Draymond's. You can have any other performance from this weekend. I'll take Isaiah's. I will ride with Isaiah through this entire playoffs. A guy like that is the, that is the definition, the embodiment of toughness. And I don't know how in any way he could have made anyone uncomfortable. That team, this league, is better for, us, for Isaiah Thomas. Well, first of all, I think it's important to point out that I think that Barkley made that statement prior to the game. So, in other words, Isaiah Thomas was about to play. Uh, usually when you're televising a game, these guys are out on the court shooting and what have you, and the cameras are following them, showing footage of them practicing, prepping for the game. And you saw him sitting on the sidelines in tears, and Avery Bradley was the only one that had to go over to him because obviously they're friends because they grew up in, 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 you know, in neighborhoods near one another. I have not spoken to Charles Barkley about this. I do not know uh, what point that he was making, but knowing Charles Barkley for years the way that I know him, I didn't take any offense to what he was saying. What I deduced from what he was pointing out was that to see the guy, your star player, in that state of mind, you're not saying it as a criticism. You're saying it's uncomfortable because you realize it's so devastating to him, you don't know what to do. And as players and as teammates, yeah, you have an obligation to go out there and perform. And your sister was not the one that died in a car accident, but you love him. And you know how devastating he is. And that in and of itself can end up being a distraction for you because you're actually watching him endure that. If you have a friend, if you have a loved one, and you're seeing them in, in the throes of that moment, going through what they're going through. I'm not saying that's the word I would use as uncomfortable or whatever the case may be, but I don't think it's something to be criticized for. I think it's one of, you know, that's the way he decided to articulate himself. I got a guy that was a basketball player that was imagining himself in that situation with a teammate that's balling and he's devastated and he's going through uh, just, just such pain and you're wondering, my goodness, what do you do here? Thank and that's you for what it highlighting is. that it was before, Barkley, though, because that, yes. that's a key yeah, point. Barkley yes. seems. Go ahead, Max. Barkley seems to have been expressing sympathy to yes. me. I interpreted it as him expressing sympathy, like maybe this guy shouldn't be here yeah. right now. He's going through this enormous, um, um, you know, this incredible adversity at the moment. Um, but even in expressions of sympathy. At times like this, it's important to be careful, not in a not in terms of like the civility of public discourse, but out of respect to the family because of what they're going through. Um, literally, I know you're well, putting, you know, five or 10 or 15 people, whoever's going through that in that family, 20 people ahead of the viewing audience. But yes, in those instances, I think you have to you have to well, be so careful how you phrase things, even in expressions of sympathy. I don't think he would have said it after the game. Well, well, I don't think he would have said it after the game, but here's the important point that I wanted to point out. You know, Max and I, you know, we get into a debate every day, and Will's here, and we get into the debates, but at our core, it's our obligation to protect one another. And what I mean by that is we can have differences of opinion all day long, but if you work with people and you know them, you know their heart. Yep. And so, it might not have meant it. Like, he's on the set with Ernie mm -hmm. and Kenny and Shaq, who went through, who articulated that he went through this himself. 
We have to trust that team. They're a great team. They're the award winners and all of this stuff for a reason. And when you have somebody as great as Ernie Johnson, if there was any kind of insensitivity, if there was any kind of inappropriateness that you felt that Charles Barkley was articulating, let's believe that Ernie Johnson would have definitely come back right. and asked a question or revisited yeah. it to make sure all bases were covered. You got to trust one another in that regard. That's a very important point to make, Max.